This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by PortCityCoin.com This upload is part of a series. With permission, Dave Ridley is converting Crypto Insider articles to audio files about 20 minutes long. This can help you learn about the alternate currency world while you are eating or driving. Daily Roundup November 6, 2017 Posted by Kyle Torpy Vertical Line November 6, 2017 Daily Roundup November 6, 2017 According to Cohen Desk, Bitcoin Startup RSK plans to launch an Ethereum Desk Smart Contracts Cytocaine before the end of the year. The startup is currently awaiting the resolution of the Segwit to X hard fork attempt. According to Cohen Desk, Imbidi Media Lab Director Joy Ito has said by COS are attracting the wrong people to the cryptocurrency space. Ito made the comments during this past weekend's Scaling Bitcoin workshop. According to Cohen Desk, the U.S. Treasury will audit FinCEN's cryptocurrency practices as they relay to money laundering and terrorism financing risks. Over on Twitter, an exchange between Blockstream CEO Adam Back and Segwit to X lead developer Jeff Garzik appears to have illustrated Garzik's belief that the upcoming Segwit to X hard fork is risky. According to the South China Morning Post, China's central bank is researching the creation of their own sovereign digital currency at the same time they are cracking down on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Next Crypto Insider article follows. How are governments in Central Asia embracing digital currencies? Posted by Tim Helper Vertical Line November 6, 2017 How are governments in Central Asia embracing digital currencies? Central Asia might not be the first part of the world that comes to mind when you think of digital currency developments. Indeed, most would instinctively look further east, to countries like Japan. South Korea and until recently China to find entire nations gripped by Bitcoin enthusiasm. But as initial coin offering ICO bans come into force in China and South Korea, and Japan begins on its own regulatory drive, investors elsewhere on the continent are wondering if they can take advantage of the East Asia digital currency hiccup especially those in Central Asia. Even though Central Asian digital currency interest remains fledgling for the most part, that could all change soon. Interest is intensifying fast in the region, and knowledge is deepening. As Central Asian governments begin playing an increasingly vital role, the region could be set to capitalize. Kazakhstan at the fore leading the Central Asian digital currency charge is Kazakhstan, the biggest economy in the region. In fact, the Kazakh government has on numerous occasions publicly pledged its intention to lead the way when it comes to making digital currency progress in the SIS. The government has set up the fintech-focused Astana International Financial Center with a view to speed up the country's digital currency and blockchain technology progress. With the likes of Deloitte, Waves, Juskudum and Kesra Consulting all collaborating on projects at the center, Bitcoin analysts the world over are starting to sit up and take notice. Natalia Shiliko a partner at Kirov, said earlier this year, Kazakhstan has become the second country in the world, after Japan, to recognize the need for the development of a cryptocurrency market system at the governmental level. 
the development of a digital currency market at the Astana International Financial Center is the first step towards a creation of a full-fledged ecosystem for the digital economy in Kazakhstan. Indeed, Kazakhstan's Bitcoin volume has spiked sharply in the second half of this year as the government drive begins to take effect hitting a record high of almost 19 million in the third week of October. Meanwhile, Kozak startup Lendex will begin three ICO operations on December 1st, with a full ICO crowd sale to follow in 2018. This will finance a cross-border P2P lending platform for what the company calls underbanked consumers in both Central and Southeast Asia. Mixed messages from Moscow Not everyone in the region is wholeheartedly on board with digital currencies, however. Early last month, at a Moscow meeting of 20 international central banks with a strong Central Asian contention in attendance, the mood was stark. Russia's central bank issued an ominous statement warning of the nature of serious concerns over the risks of digital currencies, citing potential money laundering and terrorism financing as the reasons. The hosts claimed the central banks present at the summit had arrived at a consensus on the matter. And a prominent Russian financial analyst claimed the digital currency market's strong recent showing was nothing but artificial hype. As many Central Asian nations still follow Russia's lead on a whole host of policy decisions, the total crackdown on digital currencies is not out of the question. However, there is plenty of evidence that would indicate then far from beginning the digital currency purge, Moscow is now bullishly fostering progress in the field. Only a few months ago, Russia's central bank began working on Master Chain, its own Ethereum-based digital currency, in conjunction with some of the country's leading fintech specialists. Indeed, Russian President Vladimir Putin seems to be particularly keen on the idea of developing digital currencies, a particularly important fact considering Moscow's scope of influence in the six region. Putin recently announced, we should use the advantages provided by digital currencies in the banking sphere. It is certainly important, at the same time not to create extra barriers. Conditions should be created instead for further growth and improvement of the national financial system. Beyond Astana, it may take some time for Bitcoin fever to spread outside Kazakhstan, which has been positively evangelistic in its approach to digital currencies. Many will instead choose to sit and wait to see how Kazakhstan and Russia fare with their ventures before wading in. But there are signs that a few proactive governments in the region are not content to sit on the fence any longer, and are instead looking to develop their own pilot schemes. Azerbaijan is one such country and is now mulling the potential virtues of launching its own digital currency. In May, a leading figure at the International Bank of Azerbaijan stated, the government has all the necessary means to ensure reliable control and high level of security for a cryptocurrency. I believe that Azerbaijan, having become a locomotive in this sphere among the CIS countries, can introduce for example, as coin. In Georgia, meanwhile, conditions are ripe for digital currencies to make a big splash. The Georgian government and business world is already making giant strides in the blockchain sector, and has developed one of the most notable Bitcoin mines in the world. The government official from neighboring army recently expressed his surprise at just how enthusiastic Georgians are about digital currencies, recounting, 
I visited Georgia four to five months ago to see the Bitcoin farm. One Bitcoin cost $1,200 when I was crossing the border. And it cost $1,290 when I was on my way back to Armenia in the evening. Early days it may be too soon to jump to conclusions about Central Asia and digital currencies. Should Moscow decide to crack down on ICOs and introduce stricter regulations for exchange platforms, developments in the area could well come to a screeching halt. That said, countries like Kazakhstan have just enough clout to go it alone when it comes to digital currencies, and Putin's own enthusiasm for Bitcoin, that a room and so on could prove contagious. As much governments in the Far East hum and haw about their fintech policies, their Central Asian counterparts, particularly those in Astana, are starting to make serious digital currency inroads. Next Crypto Insider article follows. The battle between state government and crypto decentralization posted by Inbar Price Vertical Line November 7, 2017 The battle between state government and crypto decentralization The future of finance and government is ominous. While the EU is edging towards financial dictatorship, and China is working towards its social credit system, it is time to consider alternatives. Let me introduce a speculative story, based on the ideas of Putvol Luktak, who outlined some steps of how decentralization and cryptocurrencies can make governments obsolete. The Uber case study, as explained below, is a prime example of how people can respond with liberating alternatives as the government tightens its vice grip on innovation. Cash prohibition and government monopoly cash payment is becoming regulated in most of the EU. In Slovakia, the cash payment of over 5,000 euros is a criminal act. In France, the limit is 3,000 euros, and in Spain 2,500 euros. In the Czech Republic and Austria, as well as in many other European countries, Anonymous prepaid payments cards became prohibited. In the Netherlands, more and more restaurants are only accepting non-cash payment. It is probably just a matter of time until cash is completely banned. All these actions increase government surveillance and control. Anonymous cryptocurrencies may offer a solution. For example, Zcash and Monero are truly anonymous digital currencies. What Monero and physical cash have in common is fungibility. When you open your wallet, you have no idea who has used your coins in the past or who will use it in the future. Coins have no transaction history and are mutually interchangeable which is not the case for bank or credit card transactions. If you receive a digital transaction, it is easy to find out and trace the origin, look up through where it has passed, and read into its future. There is no such thing as anonymity in a bank transaction. Governments have many reasons to remove anonymity which allows for more control. They know who is buying from who, selling what as well as the population's consumer habits. Privacy is a fundamental right which should apply to finance as it does to other aspects we value in our lives. Thanks to cryptocurrencies, truly anonymous, fungible cash is possible and available. Edward Snowden's quote is appropriate arguing that you don't care about the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say.
government monopoly prompts decentralization a prediction can be made on how existing technologies can significantly alter the fabric of our society we can use uber as a real life example of how change is taking place and where it can lead us in many major cities uber is highly regulated or completely prohibited with the main purpose of eliminating competition for taxi drivers. In Berlin, Uber is obliged to charge an equal amount as taxi drivers, as do not to harm their business. In cities all over the world, taxi drivers are striking and protesting, demanding and receiving action against Uber. It is easy enough to ban it as a central company, as it has already been done in London, Budapest, Barcelona, Denmark, Finland and the Netherlands. The solution, if a society desires these services, is to decentralize Uber. These projects already exist. For instance, Arcade City provides a peer-to-peer -peer taxi system in Austin, Texas with networks built by local communities, not corporations. As governments continue to ban Uber, more people will turn to decentralized versions of Uber. Technically speaking, these cannot be shut down or regulated. In the prospect that this decentralized Uber itself continues operating, a possible response could be that Visa Card will reject payments between their users. This situation will prompt people to switch from the state currency to cryptocurrencies, especially anonymous ones, paving the way for a truly decentralized application of Uber where all drivers and passengers will use anonymous cryptocurrency. If there is a specific illegal subject behind this decentralized business, the government can still ban, regulate or sue the given legal entity. But this is not possible if the company is fully decentralized. Government will lose monopoly due to decentralization and cryptocurrency today. The states have a monopoly over business licenses as they hold the control over what is legal. However, this may not be true for the future. In decentralized autonomous organizations KO relationships between company owners can be defined by smart contracts and stored to a decentralized blockchain. Authoritative hierarchy as a naturalized practice in governments or corporations is ruled out as all rules are enforced digitally using so-called oracles which interact with physical reality. If more and more companies will do businesses as decentralized autonomous organizations, governments will lose the monopoly. The next step takes things further. The decentralized Uber supporting anonymous cryptocurrencies based on KO framework will start to offer any services and products to anyone. It means there will be a universal decentralized sharing economy service and application allowing anyone to provide any services or products to anyone using truly anonymous cryptocurrencies robust reputation systems and escrow services will solve the mutual trust. Open Bazaar is an example of a thriving, open source, decentralized marketplace, eliminating the middleman and directly connecting people. Part of CL is a new competitor, as an open source, decentralized privacy platform built for global person-to-person -person and business-to-person air commerce. What role or influence does the government have here? None. Government becomes obsolete. All these phases are technically feasible, and we have the technology to achieve this utopia. Thanks to this system and applications, we can move to DAOs, peer-to-peer societies, where anyone can offer services to anyone in a trusted and reliable way.
all taking place without the need for a third party, aka the government. Peer-to-peer -peer societies benefit from reputation systems. Just as in Uber or Airbnb, users of the network can be rated and given feedback. It provides a truthful and constructive review allowing for other users to make a choice with whom to interact. Escrow services eliminate the need for centrally enforced government's laws and regulations in transactions between strangers by acting as a moderator. The mutually agreed upon third party regulates the payment between two parties in a financial agreement. For example, you send your crypto cash to the escrow service which notifies the seller to ship the product or provide the service. Once the product is confirmed to arrive, and the buyer checks its quality, the escrow completes the transaction by releasing the funds directly to the seller's digital wallet. Thanks to this it is possible to achieve the mutually trusted market, and provide services or products in an anonymous and honest way while significantly reducing frauds. The moral of the story we don't need controlling and immoral governments, especially for doing trusted and reliable businesses. Stay tuned to RibleyReport.com for more audio versions of crypto insider articles. Rare coins, pawns, gold and silver bullion. Check out Port City Coin in Portsmouth, New Hampshire for your precious metal needs. A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, happy to do a cash transaction. Why buy your medals from one of those slave state mints when you can support the free state economy? Visit PortCityCoin.com, or as I like to call it, PortCityCoin.com.